As more financial transactions become electronic, cyber criminals have also become more sophisticated and are now targeting individuals and large financial organizations. Every day that goes by, either individuals, institutions, corporate institutions, as well as some bank institutions, face cyber attacks. And these attacks are enhanced by SIM card, I mean by, by phones. According to the police crime report released this week, 222 cyber-related cases were investigated in 2020, some of which involved huge electronic financial transactions. Institutions don't even report their attacks, the fraud that has been orchestrated onto them. Because some of these institutions are service institutions. It, it, it takes pain, for example, for a banker to report. The 2020 crime report cites 11 billion shillings, which was fraudulently siphoned out of the country through mobile money accounts and two commercial banks. I think the latest and the high profile case of cyber attack was involving one of the aggregators in town, that is Pegasus. It is the aggregator of several banks and telecommunication companies where we lost close to 12 billion. It was 11 billion point something. Twine cites a senior government official whom he declined to name who lost over 100 million shillings through cybercrime. There was an advert for a promotion and he did an interview. Then somebody came and warned him that for you to be through, you need to part up with 100 million. The government ministry also reported they had lost billions of shillings to a foreign country after government accounts were hacked into. Actually, it, it, was, it was almost successful, but one of their IT experts was able to detect it and he intercepted that money when it had already left the country. Twina explains how mobile money accounts are being duplicated to steal money from unsuspecting Ugandans. Especially the national IDs. Now, the moment you submit your national ID for photography, I mean for photocopying, uh, this person, the photocopier with fraud intentions, will create a situation whereby he will communicate to you that the first copy was faulty and he puts it in the dustbin. The criminals come because it's a syndicate. They come, pick this stuff, which was Showed to you as if it's rubbish, they make it clear and have it used for registration. For example, on online systems, you have the propensity and the ability to mask your identity through proxy handles. So instead of introducing your real handle, your real name, for example, and your identity on internet connected platforms, you carry the ability to go anonymous and present your name as a different entity altogether. Uh, so the link sometimes is broken or it's redirecting you to another site. The, the link doesn't have a padlock on it. What do those things mean when you interact with an online platform? So because of this lack of awareness and absence of awareness on some of, 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 of the ways in which you see an ordinary citizen can protect themselves, they fall prey to some of these scams by the criminals. And criminals use the same old tricks to be able to reach out to people. The financial intelligence experts say banks and telecom companies are the worst hit by electronic cybercrime. It's the banks, uh, and, and, and just that actually most of the time they never disclose these things, but there's a lot of uh, cyber criminals uh, that target banks. Um, so some of the things are covered and they never come to the media. The 2020 crime report also cites about 4 million US dollars, approximately 15 billion Uganda shillings, that got lost through cross border online fraud, online business fraud, internet fraud, email hacking, fake visas, and bank fraud. The experts have a set of advice to deal with the problem. Train our police uh, because they're investigators of the things. Um, some of them are not very, very well knowledgeable with, with technology and how this thing happens. And looking at the inside job requires you to look at the employees that you have, have a good cyber security policy that directs and guides on who is supposed to access which levels 
on your system in that you can be able to spot a red flag when an employee that is not supposed to access a certain level of the system hasn't followed the protocol. So some of these things can help you to, you know, to pacify some of those threats that are inside the system. Jingo Francis, NTV.